Hello, welcome to the University of Queensland. This is the first episode of UQ's student webinar series for 2019. I'm Krandesi, I'm from Malaysia and I'm a student here at UQ. Today we're going to talk about being an international student in Australia and I have some guests here to help me talk about this. Hi. 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 Um, my name's Anjali and I am studying in Brisbane doing the Masters of Environmental Management. I've been here for about six years now. Wow. And yeah, I'm really loving my time as an international student. That's great. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Ismail Al Habsi. I am from Oman. I'm doing Bachelor of Science at uh, Major in Geology at University of Queensland. I'm getting my fourth year here, actually. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Hi. Hi, my name is Dion. I'm from Singapore. Mm -hmm. I started in UQ in 2013 with a Bachelor of Communications, mm -hmm. majoring in public relations. And right now, I'm in my final year, just finishing up a Master's of International Relations. That's really cool. Thank you. Okay. What we're going to do in this series is answer your questions about studying overseas and to help you prepare for what you could expect of a life here in Brisbane, Australia. Each episode will feature different guests to discuss topics around being an international student. So, let's get into it. Talking about studying in Australia is a very fun topic for me because I'm an international student too. The stories shared in today's episode are all true and are personal experiences from myself and our guests to help give you a better understanding of what it's like studying internationally. Let's begin by learning some quick facts about Australia, Brisbane and UQ that could entice you. Australia is one of the most popular study destinations in the world. I mean, aside from the world leading universities, it has beautiful landscapes, loads of wonderful wildlife and amazing weather for most of the year. UQ is located in Brisbane, the capital of the Sunshine State, Queensland. We're on the east coast of Australia, about a half an hour plane ride from north of Sydney and a two hour flight north of Melbourne. Did you know that Brisbane was actually voted one of the most beautiful cities in the world? It was named eighth in the world by Rough Guides and I would definitely agree. What do you think about that, Anjali? Not surprised that it was voted there. Um, I think Brisbane is an extremely beautiful city. It's, it's very relaxed and it has this laid back yeah. culture that shows in an every day to day life. Um, it has the best of being a big city, but also a bit of small town. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's not as fast paced. It's extremely safe and being, being as small as it is, I, th I find the people much warmer and friendlier. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Brisbane is a study paradise. It is also the third most popular international student destination in all of Australia. There are more than 85,000 international students in Brisbane alone. The city has a very multicultural feel and Brisbane is home to over 200 nationalities and 220 languages. In fact, 28% of Brisbane residents were born overseas. You meet people from all over the world all the time and it's a very relaxed place. Would you agree, Ismail? Yes, I totally agree that um, it's a very relaxed city and it's a very multi multicultural city as well. Uh, the beauty of Brisbane is uh, like a focal city and contains uh, so many nationalities mm -hmm. and um, you could meet uh, people from different countries around the world in such a small, uh, in such a city like Brisbane. Um, uh, and also, if you go to the uh, Brisbane like city, walking day to day, you will see like so many festivals, cultural festivals, yeah. and by itself, it's a good like to see all the culture um, of different countries um, in, in in the city actually, yeah. in Brisbane city. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. So the University of Queensland is a world <coughs> top fifty university, and the reason why we're all here today. How about this? Did you know here at UQ there were 50,331 students last year? Wow. Could you guys guess how many international students there were last year, Dion? Hmm, I'm guessing maybe about a quarter, about 15,000. Mm-hmm, yep. And Ismail? Probably, probably 15,000. Yep, and Anjali? Uh, close to that number, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> Yep. Yep. You're all pretty close. <laughs> um, we actually have around 18,000 international students studying here. So to those of you thinking about becoming an international student, you are not alone. 
there are many, many more students who have come away from home from all over the world just like you. There are students from 135 different countries here. I'm from Malaysia and I've found a fair amount of other Malaysians here to make friends with and create that home away from home feeling. Sometimes it's comforting just knowing that there are people from your home country nearby. How did you go about making friends here when you first came, Anjali? I joined, I lived on campus, so mm -hmm. I lived in a place called International House, where I, which is where I made a lot of friends, and I joined a lot of societies as well. Mm -hmm. So you join things that you like. I joined sports clubs, so you end up hanging around people who have the same interests as you. Yeah. That's how I started it. Yeah. So I was in International House too. <laughs> yeah. <Excellent. laughs> But coming to a new environment so far away from home can feel a bit scary when you're still in the planning phase of which university you want to study at or where in the world you will study. But with a bit of knowledge about the place, it can make the move 10 times easier. I have some fun and general information for you all about how it actually feels getting used to living in Australia and specifically Brisbane. So the following tips are just things that I thought would be useful as an international student because when I came, these were quite important to me. First up, the weather here. Aussie summers can get pretty intense sometimes, especially if you're not from a tropical or Asian country where it can be quite hot for most of the year. For me, Brisbane isn't really that bad compared to other places like Melbourne, for example. It's super hot one day and cold the next. But I'm just not used to that. I like that in Brisbane. Uh, the temperatures usually stay around the late 20s to mid 30s at most. One thing you need to know is that the summers here are in December, January and February. So the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere, where summer is in the middle of the year. And as you might have guessed by now, the winters are the opposite as well. Aussie winters are in the middle of the year. And they are definitely, definitely not very cold in Brisbane. Ismail, what do you think about the weather here? Uh, the weather actually is beautiful. Um, compared back home, um, we have only, um, oh, first of all, it's pretty much the same as mm -hmm. back home, but in back home, we have like two seasons. Here in Brisbane, we have four seasons. And the, be the beautiful thing with that is, it's not getting too cold and mm -hmm. it's not getting too hot. Um, probably in the middle of July, as you say, that it's getting, uh, middle of the year, it's getting colder, but. Um, it's not that cold where it's getting freezing. Mm -hmm. um, probably, you, you want, if you want to hang out, probably you have to wear a jacket sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, part of that, it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, beautiful um, weather. Yeah, so it can be very mild here, the weather. So now that you know about the weather here, let's talk about some of the natural beauty in Australia. Not only are you coming to the land of beaches here in Queensland, we have the world famous Gold Coast, the Sunshine Coast, Noosa and Byron Bay, all just a short drive from the UQ St. Lucia campus. We also have some amazing national parks and world heritage areas, which are great locations for walking, hiking and enjoying some of the Aussie bushland. Anjali, have you visited any of the Greater Brisbane areas? Yeah, I have. I, in fact, I love hiking. So for me, places around Brisbane like Springbrook mm. National Park, or even uh, there's Mount Warning, which is in New South Wales, which is a great climb if you're into it. Absolutely love that I have options to do that over the weekend. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Thank you. Um, and closer to campus in the Brisbane city and around the inner city suburbs, you also have heaps to do. You have a number of farmers markets and food markets that you should definitely check out when you're here. There are a lot of city parks and the botanical gardens are one of the most relaxing places I've been to and I strongly urge you to pay a visit whenever you're stressed or need a break from your studies. You could also pay a visit to Eat Street, which is a giant night market built in shipping containers full of food. It's one of my favourite places to try lots of different food options. Ismail, do you have any recommendations in Brisbane to visit? Uh, it's a good question, actually. So many places, actually. But to highlight, um, uh, Mount Kutha, Mount Grafat um, mm -hmm. are one of the beautiful mountains here. You could go and see the entire city from the top. Um, also, it's a good um, place you know, to take photos in the sunrise, sundown. Also, um, also there is a um, Brisbane market. It's mm -hmm. a local market, and it happens like every Saturday. 
it's a very uh, unique local market in Brisbane. As well as uh, there is a, a Long Ping Park, which is um, it's, uh, it's like a, a zoo, and um, you could meet uh, koala. Yeah. Uh, you take a photo with the koala. You could feed the kangaroo. Um, it's pretty amazing, actually, yeah. to visit. Those them. are really good recommendations. Thank you. When you study abroad, you will definitely, definitely miss home food. It's been a year since I came here to study, and I miss home food so much. <laughs> the food here is great, and you have to explore the little brunch spots and the cafes, but you will end up missing home food. However, rest assured that if you ever just feel like eating out, you're sure to find somewhere in Brisbane that serves up something to remind you of home. You can just Google up restaurants, but I recommend Sunnybank or Upper Mount Gravit for Asian food. Both are suburbs close to the centre of Brisbane and are only a 20-minute drive. You'll also find plenty of international supermarkets all around the city, so you can always cook home food in your accommodation. Do you guys miss home food at all? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. I don't, I don't think anything can make you as homesick as food. You'll get used <laughs> to the life, you'll get used to anything, but food is what you miss the most. I have picked the suburb where there's mm -hmm. the best Indian food. <laughs> yeah. Priorities. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, once I actually arrived, um, um, I felt like I was missing uh, Omani food. But then the matter of time, just to know uh, the restaurants around you, uh, because our food is similar like Indian food and uh, Ar like Arabic, other Arab uh, restaurants. Yeah. So I don't miss that much, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I do actually, but with Brisbane being so multicultural, it's so easy to find food that you miss from home here. It's so easy to find ingredients that you can easily use to recreate your favorite recipes or mom's cooking. Yeah, yeah. I, I do get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, moving on, we are now going to talk about Aussie lingo. So, mate, arvo, <coughs> brekkie, servo, barbie. These are all words that you'll be hearing soon if you choose to study in Australia. The most famous of all is, of course, mate. Yeah. Everyone's your mate here. Mate just means friend or buddy. So you could say, hey, mate, or how are you going, mate? And mm. avo means afternoon, brekkie means breakfast, and barbie means barbecue. They're all just shortened versions of words, so it'll be very easy to get the hang of. Dion, <laughs> you've been here for quite a while, so do you speak Aussie yet? Yeah, mine. I'm having a rip of a time here. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> So I remember coming here last year and I was living in a college on campus, International House in fact, and of course O Week made it all a bit easier, but I don't really remember anyone telling me about the short forms like Avo, Barbie and all. In fact, I only learned about Servo, which is service station, last month. So what are the little things that you guys noticed that are different from your home country that when you came here? I think um, what first stood out to me was how everything over here closes really early. Yeah. But it actually forced me to step out of my comfort zone. I was doing, I was joining sports that I'd never done before. Yeah. I was stepping out in the evenings more, and it was just you do have things beyond just the shopping. That's all that closes, honestly. Yeah. But then you learned it's a friendlier city. It's a safer city. Yeah. You just kind of find your own. Spot. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, uh, I noticed two things actually. First of all, the the healthy lifestyle here. Mm -hmm. I really like it, which yeah. is um, it's, it's very amazing actually. And um, other thing is the transportation here. Yeah. So back home, we don't have this kind of public transportation where mm -hmm. uh, easy can go everywhere. Yeah. Here we have all type of transportation. You could catch ferry, bus, uh, train. You could you know access everywhere you want to go. And that's uh, by itself, um, I know that's a different from back home, actually. Yeah, and really I think cool. speaking on transport as well, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool that you can actually catch a ferry from the city right to uni. Uh -huh. I've yeah. never done that before till I came to Brisbane. <laughs> and another fun fact is how when you bought the buses or the ferries, it's pretty common to exchange greetings with the drivers like, hey, how are you, yeah. morning, things yeah. like that. And when you get down, you both say thank you to each other, you just give a wave. And that just reminds me how friendly and laid back Australia is, really. Yeah. 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 Everyone Amazing. is so friendly yeah. here. Yeah. It makes a difference to your day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. that's right. Exactly. And it's important to remember that when you choose to study in Australia, and UQ in particular, there's so much student support here. I guess the point we are making is that life's going to be different, but that's nothing to worry about. 
It's just different and part of the journey of being an international student and learning about a new place. When you first start at UQ as an international student, it will be so exciting. There are so many activities that help you settle in and a week will be a huge part of that. I have a very quick video to play you and it will show you a glimpse of the beautiful St. Lucia campus and some of the activities from a week last month. So O-Week is orientation week for new students and there are workshops, events, networking and games for you to get involved with. I've been to three O-Week so far and I just feel like they're getting bigger and better. <laughs> so many clubs and societies to check out and all the free goodies. It's like a week-long festival. There's also something called the Jumpstart program run by UQ, which is made for those coming to UQ for the first time. You can meet new people, explore UQ, get a feel of what your next couple of years of study might feel like, and a bunch of activities to do. It's like an introduction to university for international students. I volunteered for the Jumpstart program this year and I got to see some of the new students and help them settle down in uni. But Anjali, <laughs> you actually were part of the Jumpstart yes. program. Yeah. yeah, so. You summed it up pretty well. It's just that it's an, it's mm -hmm. a, it's an introductory course, it will exposes you to an academic culture here because it is honestly quite different from home. Yeah. Uh, gives you an idea of what all workshops you can attend, where you can go and also you end up meeting more international students mm -hmm. before university starts so it yeah. gives you a few familiar faces to interact with, yeah. makes you feel less alone which actually does make a very big difference. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's good. yeah. Really have you guys heard about the Jumpstart program? Yeah, I've heard of it really. And I think it's basically just a crash course into mm. uni life. Everything that you need to know for the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, how to settle in Australia and just basically understanding the learning culture here mm. in Australia. Yeah, yeah, that's very well said. Crash course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so the colleges on campus definitely have their own orientation week experiences too. And I'm sure the other accommodation providers do as well. I must say, living on campus is a different experience to anything I'd known before. And you instantly meet new people, you live in a, such an inclusive environment, and there are free events and gatherings that you can go to. I feel like living on campus can be really fun and helpful, especially if you're coming away from home for the first time. So Anjali, you lived in International House. How was it? Uh, the f International House was probably one of the best decisions I made coming here because mm. uh, I was 18 and coming here as a new student was is very daunting. Mm -hmm. A lot of the local students al already know each other. Uh, as I was telling you, the Jumpstart program was very helpful if you want to get, if you want to know familiar faces, but mm -hmm. in international houses, like coming back home to a family, you end up making friends. Yeah. 50 Fifty percent of the students were international, and you're all in the same boat together. So you all forget that you're homesick. And I, for me, I wasn't just exposed to Australian culture. I was exposed to a bit of everything. Yeah. But mm. living in one place, and I think by the I lived there for three years, and I think mm. by the end of it, everyone from the director to ev all my friends, they all had my back, and they all kind of pushed me. And yeah. yeah, it was like a family. It yeah, great. Yeah. it is. Yeah. It's nice. A big family. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a big yeah. family. Yeah. So another part of O Week is a day called Market Day. It's when all the clubs and societies of the university come together in the Great Court to get people to sign up. Clubs and societies are basically groups of students who are all interested in one particular thing. For example, it might be their culture or heritage or beliefs or other interests like food or sports. I think there's even a UQ chocolate society. I think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. So I would highly recommend joining a club or society so you can make friends with people with similar interests or you feel closer to home just by joining your home country society. 
When you join a club or society, you will most probably get a membership card. And depending on the club or society, you will have discounts at certain brands or restaurants, which is very enticing as a student. <laughs> so, do you guys know how many clubs and societies there are? Well, it's pretty much a club for everything under the sun here at UQ, right? Yeah. And you can even start a club if you can't find one that you like. So. I would put the number at probably around 200, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about you guys? Um, probably 200 and something. Yeah. I'll and stick to what they said. <laughs> yeah, 200 ish. So, 200 ish. You guys are actually right. It's just a little bit more than 200. And so, let's watch this quick video of some other current UQ students talking about why they joined a club or society during their first year. In fact, Min is from the Singapore Student Society, Johnny is from the Indian Student Society, and Ronak is from the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Society. And they are all international students. Hi, I'm Min, and it's awesome to join the club and society right here in UQ because I get to meet people who are like me. There are plenty of benefits to joining a society and club here, including like the inclusivity you have and um, being able to join like-minded people and network and have tons of fun while you're at it. We have many things to talk about and in such a foreign place, I am really impressed by the amount of clubs and societies that we have for international students and I get to meet people who share the common interests with me and understand my accent and everything. So there's heaps of deals and discounts and plenty of events throughout the year and you'll also get to meet so many new friends and make uh, so many new connections as well. And I definitely recommend them to join a club or, or a society which helps them get out there talk to people and uh, everyone has a talent, everyone has a skill set and they just really want to dive deep into it with the help of, of a society or a club. So I'm sure you're already feeling a little overwhelmed just deciding where to study but when you're here getting to know an unfamiliar campus, adjusting to lectures and tutorials and learning new things all the while becoming familiar with Aussie culture, it's easier than you think. You'll be making friends, you'll find some comforts, like food clubs and societies and as time goes on, like for me now, you'll become familiar with this new place, Australia, and everything finds its way. But if you do find yourself struggling, UQ has international student support services to help. They're free to access and a great resource for all international students. Dion, you've been here for a, a while now, so could you tell us a little bit more about student services? Well. I think UQ provides a really comprehensive suite of services for international mm -hmm. students. I mean, it's a really huge decision to uproot yourself and move into a different country, into a brand new culture. And I think UQ really looks after you right from the beginning or right before you even arrive. Did you know that um, newly arriving international students can actually book a free airport pickup service? Wow. So you have a driver that will meet you at the airport and take you straight to your accommodation. And that's, that's great. Yeah, and they make sure that someone is actually there at your accommodation to, to guide you in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, they make sure you're really well looked after. And I think apart from that, um, student services offers a lot of support services as well. Mm -hmm. Things like housing, accommodation and rental mm -hmm. advice. This is your first time renting and you just need some advice or someone to talk to to know about the rules, the policy and procedures. Um, you can make an appointment and they're more than happy to give you the ins and outs into renting or securing your own place. Um, apart from that, I've also been to a couple of workshops and they do have some really interesting workshops like how to avoid procrastinating because that's yeah. basically every student's nightmare. That is. Um, how to avoid surviving on just two minute instant noodles. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, outside of student services, you've got employability and careers as well. I know that as international students, yeah. um, trying to find an internship or part-time job is really essential to our experience here. Mm -hmm. And UQ really offers support in the form of, say, you can make an appointment to meet with a careers advisor. And they might do a mock one-to-one -one interview session with you where you are coached on um, 
how to answer certain questions, how to present yourself, or they might even look at your resume and give you tips and pointers on how to improve it. So, yeah, yeah I think there's a lot that UQ offers to international students. You just got to go and take full advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. So, when you were an undergrad student here, did you find these workshops useful? Did you? Well, I definitely went to quite a few of them and mm -hmm. I think it's made me the person that I am today. I'm so much more wow. confident, so much more outspoken and really just so much more comfortable in meeting new people, being adaptable in new situations. Yeah, that's, that's yes. really nice. Good for you. Um, so getting out into the city and embracing your <coughs> new home is really part of the experience and learning curve. There are multiple pages on Facebook and Instagram that you could follow or like just to get updates on what's happening around Brisbane City, what events are going on about campus, or where to find free food, which is very important. <laughs> <laughs> you can also check out the Australian tourist boards to see some of the great places to visit right at your doorstop when you study here in Brisbane, Australia. Getting around Brisbane is very easy. I use the public transport here and it's super, super easy and convenient. So I don't take public transport back home in Malaysia, but here it's so easy using the train or the bus and I like it. I take the bus everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so easy as long as you have a go card. So do you guys use public transport? All the time. Actually, yeah? we use the public transport to get to uni, you know, to go to the city. So many, with the, like every day, it's a daily thing we have. Yeah. For me, yeah. So, you, I'm sure you guys have the student concessions on the go karts. Yeah. 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 So, do you guys also use the city cat, the the ferry yes. that comes into you, the uni? Yeah. Yes. That's Sometimes very so. convenient for you. <laughs> yeah. So it's a super easy way to get around the city and to wider areas of Brisbane. So apart from the wonderful lifestyle which comes with living in Australia, and now I'd like to think and talk a little bit about the benefits of being an international student. I mean, why is it better than staying at home to study? So I wondered if each of you could tell me just a little bit about why you chose Brisbane and Australia to study. Um, as I said at the beginning, is um, uh, Brisbane is a relaxed city and it's very multicultural city. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty behind it. And um, other thing, why I choose um, to be an international student, uh, beside my studies, um, um, like I decided to, to be involved like this kind of programs mm -hmm. where I could utilize my leadership skills, meet new future students yeah. that they're going to experience the same experience that I have been through, just to share my experience with them. Yeah. I think that's very interesting for me to be as an international student. That's nice. And Dion? Well, I was looking at a few different cities really mm -hmm. and I think Brisbane just really stood out for me in terms of value proposition compared to other cities mm -hmm. um, Brisbane is definitely not as expensive yeah. but you're not sacrificing anything as well I mean it is lively as it is but not over the top crazy yeah. so I find that you know every time I go into the city there's always something new but I'm not overwhelmed I'm not feeling like oh there's so much happening what do I do right yeah. now mm -hmm. and then when you look at UQ and its close proximity to the city mm -hmm. and its overall standing and reputation, um, it's just a natural choice. Yeah, and Anjali? Yes. So in my case, I didn't pick Brisbane first. I ended up <coughs> picking UQ as a, mm -hmm. a university first. Um, I chose it because I wanted to study crocodiles. And That's cool. naturally, Queensland made a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, this university has a very good reputation as far as being a science research university is concerned. So that's where I picked it. And then it just, I ended up being lucky that it was in Brisbane because yeah. Brisbane's nice. Exactly as Dion said, it's not overwhelming. Yeah. I come from a very big city. Yeah. I definitely love being in Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> For me, I chose to become an international student instead of staying in Malaysia because I had spent my whole school life back home. I thought it would be a good opportunity to come out to Australia and explore what there is to offer and try new things. And I'm sure you guys will back me up here, but um, there are many benefits to studying in Australia. I know Australia offers one of the best education systems in the world 
and the University of Queensland ranks in the world's top 50. UQ teaching staff also have won more national teaching awards than any other university in Australia, which as an international student is very comforting to know. <laughs> yeah, I've also become a more independent and stronger person since leaving home and coming out here and I've grown to become a better and more knowledgeable person as well and I'm happy with how I've changed. Yeah. So what else is good about studying, I mean being an international student in UQ? For me it was uh, what really mattered more with my field of study I needed I needed real world experience in zoology mm -hmm. it can't be all theory and sitting at home uh, mm -hmm. sitting in class sorry and there were a lot of field trips everything was very hands on mm -hmm. and I think because of those opportunities it's helped me for the future I've built a lot of connections that mm -hmm. I would not have ever built otherwise I have I've been to career fairs and things that happen very often mm -hmm. where I've met representatives from companies that I would have never imagined to meet. So I just think that has given me a higher platform as yeah. far as my future is concerned and most importantly I think having UQ on my resume does kind of make me stand out and I like that. It does. <laughs> I guess uh, the ranking of UQ um, uh, gives a good impression when you apply for any job. Mm -hmm. You know, the, um, they will see like where university you came from and what sort of background you would have. Yeah. Um, that by itself uh, makes difference. And also, UQ offers many opportunities for during your studies while you are a student, like summer research, winter mm. research. Yeah. And it's a really good platform, you know, to, to be, m be more involved in your studies and to explore more your knowledge and, and also to sit and you have your own supervisor, like your professor or lecturer yeah. that can guide you. Mm -hmm. These things actually matter uh, and uh, sometimes in terms of, um, you know, getting more, gaining more experience mm -hmm. in your uh, field actually. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for that. And well, I think that as an international student, mm -hmm. that's already your strongest selling point. You've chosen yeah. to step out of your comfort zone. You've chosen to come into a new culture, which proves that you are resilient, um, you are adaptable, and you've got multiple skill sets that you've gained during your time in Australia, mm -hmm. which will be valued by employers here and abroad, as well as back home as well. Mm -hmm. And also looking at employers, UQ, having been in existence for such a long time now with yeah. thousands of graduates and alumni, there's a strong chance that, you know, your future employer could be a graduate from UQ as well. And yeah. then you've got a strong network out there that will look out for each other and will help you out. Mm -hmm. And this coupled with the overall standing and reputation of UQ, yeah. I think, yeah, it's a really strong selling point. It really helps graduates of the university mm. to stand out yeah. Nice. nice. I completely agree with all of you guys and thank you so much for coming out today and giving your own take on what it's like to be an international student in Australia. Thanks no for having us. <laughs> so we've come to the end of the first episode and now I'd just like to add that it is really important to remember it doesn't matter how far away from home you are and especially when you're here at UQ, you're not alone. There are many, many other international students here probably going through the same feelings as you may. As we have mentioned, there are also great support networks and we'll talk about them in more detail in next month's episode. Thank you for watching and bye-bye. Bye-bye.